Born out of our blood, we we'll continue to fight. We are such a people. The unit has got back its famous Chisokon. Everybody, each of 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 Chabula Ichin. Chabula is what you need to need. He is said to be the founding father of Zambia. On the African continent, he is known to have provided refuge for most regional liberation struggle leaders like Nelson Mandela. Leaving out Kenneth Kaunda in Zambia's history would be a serious omission. Those who were born in the immediate post-independence era up until 1991 only knew Dr. Kaunda as the only Zambian president ever. Such was the stay at the helm of power in Zambia. Dr. Kaunda was at the helm of Zambian politics for 27 years from the aftermath of independence in 1964. For most Zambians and the world over, he is fondly known as KK. Only mass public opinion could dislodge him from power and it came as a surprise. It made headlines then when the outside world least expected. Credit is given to the winds of democratic change of the 1990s which traversed the African continent. At least the strongman of Zambian politics was no longer what he had been perceived then to be Wamuyayaya, a local word meaning eternity. But who is KK? His life in politics dates back to 1953 when he was appointed Secretary General of the African National Congress under the presidency of Harry Mwangankumbula. But he would become the eventual head of the new state of Zambia at 1964. KK's life in politics is one marked with ups and downs like any other. In the pre-independence era, he spent some time in jail because of his anti-colonialism ideologies. To date, KK has gone down in the history of Zambia and Africa as one who championed the struggle against white oppression both locally and across borders. In the then Northern Rhodesia, KK took the struggle to the apex, forcing the British to negotiate their exit. Public civil disobedience characterized this constitutional struggle for freedom for the black man. This was alongside an armed struggle famously known as Cha Cha Cha. And in the pre October 24 days, the struggle paid off. The British succumbed, agreeing to negotiate their exit at Lancaster House in London. 
finally october 24th 1964 zambia was born and kk became the first indigenous leader of the newly born nation in the southern african hemisphere however kk continued his independence struggle this time beyond the zambian borders He worked day and night in this, providing support and refuge to other fleeing African freedom struggle leaders. Zambia does not have the capacity to strike back at the enemy because the enemy has been prepared for the last 60 70 years, South Africa, for the last 54 years, Rhodesia. What's more, centuries behind them coming from the Western countries, vested interests. That is the correct analysis of the problem. And unless you understand it in this way, you will be misled by the enemy. The enemy is bent on destroying your Morero, Zambians. <laughs> we in Zambia are peaceful people, peace-loving. I challenge anyone to say today here that Zambia is a war-mongering nation. I met John Foster, the arch-fascist and racist on the bridge on the bridge in search of peace I failed I failed Joshua Nkomo came here and said he was going to make have another try I said Joshua don't this thing is dead he said I must try I said you are a free man he went to Salisbury for weeks he was there he failed he was in search of peace Ian Smith has come here, and I knew I would be subject to misunderstanding by my colleagues in frontline countries, by my colleagues on the continent, by my colleagues and others in the whole world. I have allowed Smith to come here on a number of occasions in search of peace. But I'm a man with a conscience, clear conscience. God is hearing me. I can never sell out Africa. Never. Not me. Not these boys here. Not these girls here. We are men and women of principle. We have done all these things in search of peace. But it has to be genuine peace based on sincere, genuine majority rule. Anything else, you can kill us. Zambians will be born out of our blood. We we'll continue to fight. We are such a people. Zambia and its leadership devoted effort resources much more so humility to aiding neighboring countries to liberate themselves this however came at a great cost such as becoming a country of target by colonial military forces and of course the loss of lives To this day, the old generations tell tear-dropping stories of the eventual effects of this cross-boundary freedom struggle campaign on the international front. KK traveled widely, meeting world leaders in negotiations all in search of freedom for African countries. He was very convinced that Africans were capable of running their own affairs, therefore he called for an end to colonial rule on the continent. Smith is a rebel. He will always remain a rebel. He will go down in history as a rebel, a killer, a murderer. The only reason why he is still there is that he is white. That's the reason why he's there. If Smith had been black, the day he declared UDI, he would have received British troops. They would have arrested him and charged him with treason, tried him, and hanged him. But because he's white, he's of British stock, he has remained where he is for the last 13 years. Killing Zimbabwe. Killing Mozambique, killing Botswana, killing Zambia. And he has been allowed to get away with it. 
to this effect is Zambia and KK have an indelible place in the history chapters of countries such as South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe and other neighboring countries. We in Zambia do not accept Boston's decision to make Wavis Bay, which is part and parcel of Namibia, as part and parcel of South Africa. We don't accept that. Indeed. That is there like robbery. He, he, of course, what is here? What else is he? But a robber. We don't accept that and we urge the international community. I'm surprised that there's not much reaction from the people that influence decisions of that man. They've kept quiet. World today belongs to the people of Namibia. Full stop. Nothing more. KK knew very well that Zambia was never free if its neighbors were still under colonial rule. And when peaceful means seemed to be failing, it is argued that KK did give a listening ear to proponents of armed struggle. Now we've exhausted the channel of talking. Now there's only one option left, that is for the majority of the people to take up arms in Odesia and fight it out with Smith's uh, uh, mercenary uh, troops. But remember, that also ends the chances of farmers in Rhodesia getting compensation. That also ends the chances of well, that's white farmers, white civil servants, or even black civil servants getting compensations and pensions, etc., etc. Industrials, industrialists will lose out. That is the end. Because now compensations, uh, pensions will be settled on the battlefield. Therefore, by the 1980s, most of Zambia's neighbors were free from colonial rule. Back home, in the aftermath of independence, KK pursued an authoritarian rule. Following the violence of 1968, KK outlawed other political parties with the exception of his unit. He promulgated what came to be known as the one-party democracy, much to his advantage. Well, I think it's um, a great discouragement to my party uh, by taking this a very capable young man to be put in detention and uh, of course it has caused inconveniences uh, to my party but um, I expected this and I think there may be many more these inconveniences to my party uh, but this should not mean to stop the train that has been put into motion by the wishes of the people of this country. We feel we must go ahead, even if some of our leaders are going to be deterred. In fact, this was done by the British. I'm one of those who was detained for one year, and when I came back, I continued, and uh, we won our victory. And therefore, in this case, this is not a remedy to the mistakes the government has committed. I feel that uh, even if all the central committee of our party was detained, the masses will be in a position to find another set of leadership to guard them until we come back. And therefore, I am not frightened. And I know the government, and I heard that they were planning to kill my party in its infancy. They will create a lot of cases uh, to, to pin on my party. And this was long before it was born. And therefore I'm prepared for these hardships. The high cost of living as well as the general deteriorating living conditions gave rise to public outrage and food riots. 
It was these challenges that led to the formation of the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD, as calls for the introduction of multipartism in Zambia continued to grow. The democracy movement which you have started is irreversible and unstoppable. Yes. Nobody will stop this. Yes, this has to continue. Now, the pro-democracy movement, the democracy, this is my fundamental right. Yes. It is a freedom and I'm prepared to die for it. Yes. Yes. Bela on for Mwenso yo, tule ya fie kuntanshi. Tule ya mkwa shimentu ngu nujishamu yu nipi yo. Ijijintu mwachi unila. Te kwe shoku mulecho mwachi unila. Elo mwatu wana kulibari ya kamili ya valeria no kumwa. Evo mwemi ya tiyo mwentu ngu nujishamafumo ya wama kamili zeni mwentu ngu nule. By 1990, KK had no choice except to give in to winds of change ushering in a new era of multi-party democracy and elections. And on December 17, 1990, KK signed the bill for the reintroduction of multi-partism in Zambia. I want to say that I'm doing this very, very happy indeed because I want to believe that this is the wish of the people of Zambia that we should go multi party once again. Needless for me to point out that our experience in our first republic, insofar as multi partism is concerned, was a very sad one. There's still some funny idea in some circles that we should form an interim government before elections. I dismiss that with the contempt it deserves. UNIP is a freely elected government. Through the mandate of the people we lead the country. We administer the country and administer it in the most civilized way, where man is central. Man as God made him. We have made man in our own image as God's declaration. So apart from the principles, the principles which guide us, we run a civilized government here. But those principles, we still are mindful that what we do today, others will emulate tomorrow. Those who rise by the sword will perish by the sword. This has come out several times on this continent and elsewhere. So I'm very proud of myself to contribute, or be in each in a small way, to this type of civilized society construction, reconstruction. So these men and women who run this government run it in a democratic way, run it in a civilized way. And so there's no question at all of anyone imposing an interim government on us to bring in, they want to come into power through the back door. They are not frightened of the electorate. UNIP has got back its famous Chisoko, everybody, each, 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 one Zambia. Yeah. Chabwila Ichin. I'm glad, therefore, to take this opportunity to say now 
Those who want to form their small parties are most welcome, provided they know that we want peace in Zambia. Peace, stability, unity, and development. This fellow is signing on behalf of eight and a half million Zambians. Date of ascent is 17th December 1990. This was to mark end of KK's reign at the summit of Zambian politics, leaving the thread to a new era of upcoming politicians. The MMD embarked on a countrywide campaign as they promised democracy and to improve the living standards of majority Zambians. Elections were called and Kaunda and his UNIP only managed 20% of the votes while the opposition under Frederick Chilova got the rest of the votes. Credit is however given to KK for conceding defeat in the first multi-party democratic elections of 1991. This is the nature of multi-party politics. You win some and you lose some elections. You know, it's, the whole thing is a new ball game to me and I'm waiting for uh, the experts to tell me, here's where you start now and uh, uh, your elder brother Kaunda ends there, then I'll pick it up. Following these events, Zambia has earned for itself an international recognition as being a haven of peace after conducting a peaceful transition. Unwinding the clock many years later, life after the presidency was not very smooth for KK. He was incarcerated before on charges of treason in the political drama that ensued the democratic changes of 1991 then. I asked my lawyer, well, there are seven of them. They asked why is this man being detained. Because this man told a lie at Kalikalunga House. He said he was just going to interview me and bring me back. In the case of Dr. Kaunda was detained for months and pressure was mounting for the release of Dr. Kaunda from prison. Former Tanzanian President Julius Nyerere fought hard to ensure KK was released from prison. And his efforts finally paid off. And so I listened to my elder statesmen. And they are saying, keep him away from prison. So I called uh, an emergency cabinet meeting last night. And I informed them, and we agreed that we will not keep him in prison. We will move him from there and restrict him in his own house so that the former first lady doesn't have difficulties in seeing my dear elder brother, uh, Dr. Kaunda. He will consequently be restricted in his own home, but there are conditions on this restriction. And I hope he cooperates, because if he doesn't, we may be compelled to take him back to where he thinks he must stay. Our lawyers have assured us that we've got a very, very good case and they're going to battle it out to their fullest capacity. So, even as we dispense from here, I appeal to you to dispense quietly and peacefully. Let us meet again on Tuesday. I said I would not shave until I was told why 
I was in prison. Today, today, God is great indeed. I'm out, but I've not been told why I was in prison for five months and seven days. Why? I still don't know. <laughs> Those ambassadors know that the promises, the MOD, all the promises they made about accountability, about transparency, about governance, good governance, all these things, they've forgotten them. This was coupled with other dramatic developments such as his being declared stateless. Today, all these events are such that they make Keke's life full of drama amid his retained recognition as the founding father of Zambia. Even as the sun sets on his life without doubt, KK has had his fair share of contribution to laying the foundation of what makes Zambia what it is today.